Hello, my name is Katie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing something a little bit different. Um, I have decided recently that I wanted to do like a Trash My TBR series. Um, Olive from the channel of Book Olive has been doing them recently and I've been enjoying them. So I wanted to get in on that because I have a few too many books on my TBR currently. But I thought it might also be fun to pair it with like a no buy or a low buy because I have I have thoughts and we'll get into them. So the first thing we'll talk about is my my no buy or my book ban. Um, basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna allow myself but my one book of the month book. That's it for every month. I think I'll be able to get away with this because, one, I just signed up for NetGalley, so I should be getting a few arcs, which should kind of, like, uh, scratch that particular book buying itch. And then I've also been using my library a ton, and so I think that'll kind of help with that as well. So that's, that's the, the general layout of that. I think the plan is to continue on this this low buy, if you will, since I will be getting my one book of the month book every month. Um, I'm going to go with it until I have gotten through every shelf of my physical TBR. I think, I think I've determined I have about five shelves, maybe six, because I do have some books stacked, oddly, and I don't want to get too many books to the point that I can't like, have it be a short and snappy video still. I don't want to have, like, a 45-minute Trash My TBR video. So that is the plan. Wish me luck and hold me accountable, please. Um, so now that that is out of the way... Oh, one more thing. Um, I will still have one book haul coming. This will be up first. It's just the way I planned my filming schedule. I wanted this to go up so I could get your feedback and use that to help build my September TBR. So the book haul will be coming after this. It's books I bought in July and the beginning of August. So that, that will be coming, but just know that those were all purchased before this happened. The other kind of caveat, if you will, is I have a Barnes & Noble gift card that has about $50 on it right now. And so I may utilize that to purchase the occasional book if I just can't help myself. I figure that should get me about two, maybe, hardcover new adult books. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and get into the Trash My TBR. I do shelve my books, all my books, alphabetically. So that's mostly how this is going to be. Um, I do have a couple that are just thrown in here because I had already pulled them off my shelf because I was considering unhauling them. So we'll get into that too. Um, so let's just let's just start here. Oh my. Okay. So the first one here I have is Away at War, A Civil War Story of the Family Left Behind by Nick K. Adams. I actually met Nick Adams at a bookstore and he had written these. It was based on his actual family's stories um, when they were living through the Civil War. So he had passed down through the years these these letters that were exchanged between a husband and wife and I believe the wife kept a journal as well um, and he wrote a couple books based on the story the one is from the father's perspective actually in the Civil War fighting and then this is from the people left behind at home um, I will be keeping this regardless but if there's like exceptional interest in it I might read it in September the next one I have is Math and the Mona Lisa, The Art and Science of Leonardo da Vinci by, oh god, Boulent Etelé? I have no idea. I don't know how the umlauts work. Anyway, uh, this I bought, I think I got this at a museum in Washington, D.C., if I remember correctly. Anyway, I'm pretty interested in reading it still. Um, this is one that I will get to eventually, but depending on feedback on this video, I might get to it sooner rather than later. The next one I have here is Twilight of Democracy, The Seductive Lure of Authoritarianism by Anne Applebaum. I enjoy Anne Applebaum. Um, more so, I've read like her essays and things she's written for, I think she writes for The Atlantic? 
I can't remember. Um, but I enjoy hearing her speak in like podcasts and things like that. I've never read anything by her. And this one I've heard is not as good as some of her other works. So I'm, I'm a little undecided here. It's also not that long though, so I feel like it won't be terribly difficult to get through should I choose to do that. This one, I don't, I don't know. I've had this for a long time and I haven't felt any urge to read it, so we'll see. This is Turn Right at Machu Picchu, Rediscovering the Lost City One Step at a Time by Mark Adams. I picked this up, I think this one was also from a museum in DC. I wish I could remember the names of these museums. I've been to like all of them in DC. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not totally sure. It sounds interesting. I love the rediscovering the lost city aspect. But then I also uh, listened to a book on audio like last year that was supposed to be rediscovering a lost city and it was a crock of shit. So I think that's why I'm a little nervous to read this one because I don't want to be all excited and then just be let down again. Okay, um, next, this I don't, oh, I just don't know. This is Mythology by Edith Hamilton. I bought this because this seems to be, like, the pinnacle of mythological, uh, translations or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if I want to read it because I feel like, I feel like, A, this is, I think this is all Greek. Oh, no. This is Greek, Roman, and Norse myths. The thing is, I feel like I'm fairly familiar with most of those already, the ones that I care to be familiar with, and then I've read tons of retellings, so I just don't know if this one is worth reading or not. If any of you have read it, please let me know how you felt about it so I can decide whether to keep it or not. Right now I'm leaning towards not, but if I hear that it's excellent, then maybe I'll change my mind. This is another one that I think I might get rid of. This is How the Irish Saved Civilization, the Untold Story of Ireland's Heroic Role from the Fall of Rome to the Rise of the Medieval Europe by Thomas Cahill. Um, after I bought this, I started hearing like mediocre things about it, like it maybe just wasn't as good as people were expecting. And so I just don't know, I just don't know if I want to read it now. Like. <laughs> That's that's just the long and short of it. I just I just don't know if I'm that interested. So I'm probably getting rid of this. But like I said, if you had a really good experience with it, let me know. I could change my mind. This one's also not that long either. But that leads me to believe that maybe it's not actually got like a wealth of information like I would be wanting. I have so many stacks of books and they're all kind of falling on each other. Um, I have two here by Richard Dawkins and. If I'm not mistaken, he's kind of a controversial figure in at least the UK. Um, he is an atheist and incredibly loud about it, and I believe he just says some things that maybe he ought not to. <laughs> um, but anyway, he's also a biologist, I believe, or a zoologist, or both. Either way. Um, he has, like, a pretty cool job, and he's done some interesting research. I started another one of his books months ago. I don't even know where it's at right now. And I haven't finished it. And I don't know if I'm going to or not. We'll see. It kind of depends on how this goes, I think. Um, but I have Science in the Soul, Selected Writings of, pas of a Passionate Rational... Rational... Oh my god. Try that again. I have Science in the Soul, pa Selected Writings of a Passionate Rationalist. Um, this one I might dabble in just because I think it's more of like a short, like short essay type situation rather than just a long novel, or not a long novel, rather than just like a long book. Um, so I might be able to just like read a, a little excerpt here and there and get through it that way rather than just like slogging through uh, like this one which is his memoir, An Appetite for Wonder, The Making of a Scientist. I did start this several years ago. Um, I think I was writing a paper or something. I don't remember, but I know I started it and I just never finished it. And uh, I, I don't know. I'm also reading a lot more nonfiction now than I used to. So that could also play a role as to how I get on with it the second time around. Okay, then we have The Secret History of the World by Mark Booth. I think this is... Um, oh, I'll just read the back. From mystic revelations to esoteric codes, here for the first time is a history of the world based upon the beliefs of the secret societies, a radical reinterpretation of human existence, and a view of the world previously hidden from us. 
So, I mean, I've always been into, like, secret societies. I find them fascinating. And that's why I got this. And then I just totally forgot about it. So, I don't know. If any of you think that sounds cool and want me to read it and see what I think, let me know. Uh, next we have Backstage at the Lincoln Assassination, The Untold Story of the Actors and Stagehands at Ford's Theater by Thomas A. Bogar. I bought this at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. This one I do remember where I got it, but, like, I should hope so. Um, I will be reading this. It just, again, this one depends on how much interest there is in it as to how quickly I get to it. Um... I tend to steer away from American history just because I feel like I've learned so much of it in school and I find that most of it is actually kind of a lie anyway. Uh, so, hmm, I don't know. I, I, well, like, I, this one caught my eye because it's not really about Lincoln so much as about the other people who were there that night and that's why I thought this would be cool. Moving on, we have How Not to Be Wrong, The Power of Mathematical Thinking by Jordan Ellenberg. At this point, I don't remember why I bought this. <laughs> I think this is my whole, like, I don't like to be wrong thing. So I try really hard to make sure that I have all my information straight so that I'm not wrong very often. <laughs> so I think I, I bought this because I was like, I don't like to be wrong. Let's learn how not to be wrong. Um, and then the, the mathematical thinking probably got me as well because I'm a bit of a math nerd. So that that could be that. I'm kind of on the fence about this one. I I don't I don't know. I really don't know. Uh this one I don't I don't know either. I think I liked the cover. The Brain, the Story of You by David Eagleman. <laughs> I really think the cover just drew me into this. And I think I bought this when I was taking um I don't know if it was like a cognitive science class or cognitive psychology maybe or it could have been like some kind of neuroscience class I can't remember but I think I bought this at that time because I was like oh I'm interested in this and then like it's been languishing on my shelves ever since so yeah I don't know I don't even know um, let's see, an ideal introduction to how biology generates the mind Eagleman's answers are consistently clear engaging and thought-provoking so, I, I probably will read this, but, like, I don't know how quickly. Okay, next. And you can see, do, do, I think I have a type when it comes to covers, because these feel very similar to me. <laughs> uh, this is The Quantum Rules, How the Laws of Physics Explain Love, Success, and Everyday Life by Kunal K. Das. I feel like I'm going to be disappointed with this one. Again, this might have been a cover buy, but it also might have just been like, oh, that sounds cool. I want to hear, like, his his argument for this. Um, but I feel like I'm just going to be disappointed in the end. So maybe this one I'll look up some reviews and see what people were thinking overall with it. Uh, okay. The Book of Firsts, 150 World-Changing People and Events from Caesar Augustus to the Internet by Peter DePero. As you can see, I bought this on a Barnes & Noble clearance table. Um, these type of books, I find, are always kind of questionable with how factual they are, but I also find them very easy to read and they spark my interest in f historical figures that I may not have thought to research otherwise. So I'll probably keep this and just like read it here and there, like like in short clips, because the, again, this is like sectioned off nicely because you read about each individual person and or thing, um, and then then you're just you're just done with that bit and you move on. So we'll see. I feel like for someone with a short attention span, uh, i.e. me, this is probably pretty good. <laughs> okay, next, and this is actually probably a little outdated now. Um, the Space Barons, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and the Quest to Colonize the Cosmos by Christian Davenport. First of all, uh, there you go. I like this cover quite a bit. But, since Jeff Bezos just, like, took his first trip into space, it might potentially be a little outdated, but also it could potentially give me some background into how he made that happen. I don't know. I've had this book for at least two, maybe three years now, and it's just been languishing on the shelves. So let me know if any of you are interested in it or if I should just 
look it up on Wikipedia and then check the book. Next, I have A Higher Loyalty, Truth, Lies, and Leadership by James Comey. Um, I think I just bought this one because there was like, a lot of buzz around it when it came out. Yeah. I think that's basically what it was. This is a very political book, and I honestly don't even know which direction <laughs> which direction it's going to take and if I'm going to agree with anything in it or not, which I think was another reason I wanted to buy it. Um, just because, like, I don't mind getting angry if it's making me think. Does that make sense? So, we'll see. We'll see about this one. If any of you have read it or know somebody who's read it, or have seen some reviews from people who have read it, let me know if you think this is worth reading or not. We're almost done. <clears throat> we Were Eight Years in Power by ta Coates. I'm keeping this one. I will be getting to it eventually. This is one that if... This is one that it's, it's like um, general interest. If people are interested in me reading it, I will get to it sooner. If people tell me that it's really good, I will get to it sooner. If I don't hear anything, I'll probably save it till maybe like nonfiction November or something like that. We have three left. Um, this is the Miss the Mission by David W. Brown. I'm gonna I'm gonna read you the full title here. Ready? But I have to read it. Read it. So, or how a disciple of Carl Sagan, an ex motocross racer, a Texas Tea Party congressman, the world's worst typewriter saleswoman, California mountain people, and an anonymous NASA functionary went to war with Mars, survived an insurgency at Saturn traded blows with Washington, and stole a ride on an Alabama moon rocket to send a space robot to Jupiter in search of the second Garden of Eden at the bottom of an alien ocean inside of an ice world called Europa. Wow. But, like, seriously, I really want to read this. One, because the title makes me think the author has a sense of humor. And two, because that sounds like an epic story. Then I have Alexander Hamilton, A Revolutionary by Martha Brockenborough. Again, I bought this somewhere in Washington, D.C., Nobody's surprised. Um, I think part of the reason was because, like, the Hamilton craze was happening, and, like, I haven't actually seen Hamilton. I've never listened to the soundtrack. However, I feel like I know a lot of the songs just because people won't stop singing them. Anyway, uh, honestly, I feel like I could take or leave this one at this point. Honestly. I don't know. Give me feedback if you have any. And the last one. I also bought this in, you guessed it, Washington, D.C. Uh, Washington, The Making of the American Capital by Fergus M. Bordwich. Um, look. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know if I can. <laughs> Not that I don't care. I feel like I know the basics because, again, I'm an American and I have been educated in America. Therefore, I know the basics. Um, and I'm just not sure how much more I care to know. This might be one that, like, I start, and if I'm not enjoying it, I get rid of. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. Okay, and that was shelf one. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna... This is gonna take me months. <laughs> I'm probably not gonna be buying books for, like, six months or more. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on that, and then when I film my September TBR, you'll probably see at least two or three of these on that list, um, and then the next time I do my, my trash, my TBR, um, the next shelf, which will be fiction, I will let you know if I've decided to get rid of any of these. Maybe I'll throw, like, a try a chapter tag in there, and, and try a few of these, like, four or five of them. And, and, and we'll play around with it like that a little bit. Um, so yeah, that is all I have for today's video. Please, 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 if you have any thoughts, if you're interested in any of these, even just like a little bit, or if there's some that you're just not interested in at all, let me know because that'll help me weed some things out and figure out what to prioritize here. So thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon. Bye.